Hey there, welcome to this Copilot Studio course. I'm really glad you're here. In this course, I'm going to show you how to build your own agent using Copilot Studio, one that can actually help users get things done, not just answer questions. As we go through the lessons, I will walk you through the key parts of building an agent, like how to connect to knowledge sources, how to make tasks with agent flows, use connectors to interact with other systems, create guided conversations with topics and enhance responses using custom prompts. To keep things simple, we will use SharePoint as our main data source, so you don't need anything complex to get started. And once we have gone through the core components, we will put it all together into a final project. We are going to build an agent that helps managers onboard new hires. It will walk managers through registering employees, assigning onboarding bodies, requesting equipment, all through a conversational interface. But before we dive into the lessons, let me show you what that looks like in action. Let's jump into the demo. Okay, so let's start with the demo. What you see here is the onboarding navigator. This is an agent that I have built using Copilot Studio. And the main purpose of this agent is to streamline the new employee onboarding process. This has been built especially to support managers with the different steps of the process. So in the home screen, you will see that there are some suggested prompts that the manager can easily click. We can also access the suggested prompts from here. And we will start by asking a very basic question. So in this case, I'm gonna ask, which task should be completed in the first week of onboarding. So what the onboarding navigator will do is will it will look into the different knowledge sources that we have configured in the agent, the different document repositories, and based on that, it will generate a response for me. So as you can see here, it is generating a very detailed response using a specific formatting. It is providing me details of each of the, the days and activities to be done during that day for the first week. And it is also including the different references to the different documents that, I ha that has been used to create this response. If you go below, you will see the different documents. Here we are including Word documents, like in this case, we have a fre the frequently asked questions related to boarding, a welcome kit, which is the, a PDF file and even a um, new hire onboarding checklist, which is a PowerPoint presentation. So based on those uh, documents, it has generated that response for me. Now let's ask another question. For example, let's say that I want to know about specific uh, company tools or platforms my new employee should be uh, aware of. So similarly, like in the previous case, it will look into the different available documents and repositories to provide a detailed response for me. So in a very quick way, it has provided a list of relevant applications. I can continue asking specific questions about this particular response. But now let's say that I want to ask a more complex question. So in this case, um, I'm going to copy this prompt. This is a more complex prompt because we are including the name of a new hire. We are specifying the context that this new hire has not received the welcome kit yet. And then I'm asking three different questions. I, I'm asking what should I do? Who should I contact? And also even I'm asking for more details about the specific welcome kit, what is included on, on that welcome kit. So in this case, based on that context, the onboarding navigator has generated a response for me with all the details, including specifically what is available on the welcome kit, as well as who should I contact in case I don't have access or my employee does not receive that welcome kit. So it's a very detailed response and also is getting the context of the specific uh, employee providing those details for me. Okay, now let's say I'm ready to onboard a new employee. So I'm going to start a new conversation. In this case, uh, I'm going to paste a new prompt that I have here. So I'm going to ask the agent to start the onboarding process for a new team member. In this case, what the onboarding navigator will do, it will basically look into the different skills available on my agent and will determine which skill to use. In this case, for example, is responding with a form. It's asking me to register a new hire and initiate it in the onboarding process by providing the details on this form. So I already have some of those details here. So I'm just gonna copy the name. I'm also gonna copy the email address for this new employee. 
And then I'm going to select the department. In this case, it's going to be the engineering department and this is a software engineer. And finally, I'm going to select the start date for this employee. So all of this information is relevant. I'm going to just submit this prompt or this form. And, and this information is relevant to basically initiate the onboarding process. So once it's ready, I will receive this notification directly from the agent, including all the details that I have provided through the form. And I can also click on this button and this will open a SharePoint record because in the backend I'm using SharePoint to basically manage my whole onboarding process. And you can see that the record has been registered successfully. It includes all the details that I have provided. Also, something interesting is that if I go to my email, I have received a notification as a manager with the details of the new hire that I have just registered in the system. Awesome. This is great. Now, I want to know the list of new hires I am onboarding. So I'm going to ask the agent about um, get the list of new hires. And what this is going to do is it's going to use an action to basically look into the list. In this case, uh, you see I have a SharePoint list with all the records of new hires, including the one that I just registered. So easily I can see the details, including the name, the role, department, email, start date, and even the status. The status is very important in the process because with that I know specifically which is the next step on the process or what should I do next. So I can see the different employees and onboarding. And I uh, can also see that the employee that I just registered is also appearing here. Perfect. The next step for this employee, Henry, is basically to assign an onboarding body. To do that, I'm going to start by asking the agent about the list of onboarding bodies. So I'm going to ask get the list of onboarding bodies. It will use a different action to return the list of onboarding bodies. Basically, this again comes from the SharePoint list that I, that I manage. It's a separate SharePoint list. And it includes relevant details like the name, the department, the email, the employee ID, the, the experience level, as well as different skills. So this information is relevant for, to me to determine which is the best onboarding body for my new hire. Uh, also important to notice is that these are only available onboarding bodies so it could be that I have a list of, um, of other employees but they have been already assigned to support other new hires so now I'm going to proceed and uh, assign an onboarding body for a new employee so let me start with a new conversation in this case I'm going to ask the agent to assign an onboarding body to an employee with a specific email in this case, it is the email of the employee that the employee that I just registered. So the agent has determined which skill will be used to support this particular request. And it's asking for additional details. In this case, for example, it's asking for the employee ID. So since I already know the employee ID for the onboarding body, I'm just going to paste it here. And it will proceed by executing the specific skill and assigning the onboarding body. And as you can see, it has returned this card with details of the employee and the specific onboarding body based on the employee ID that I have provided. If I want to see more details, I can click here. I can click on the view button and this will open again the, the record in the SharePoint list. And you will see that it has made a couple of changes. Well, actually three changes. First, it, it changed the, the status, the body assigned. And it has added the body name and the and the body email, and even it has updated uh, the body assign check to inform that this employee have a, an onboarding body. But it also have done something else. Now, if we go to the SharePoint list and if we explore the body direct directory, which is a list that has the different onboarding bodies, you will see that Violet which has been assigned as an onboarding body for the new hire, now is not available anymore. So there has been different actions that has been taken just with a single request. Okay, now I'm going to get more details about the new employee. So I'm going to ask retrieve the new hire details for this employee. And as you can see, the status for this employee has been changed to body assigned. We already saw that in the in the SharePoint list. But it also has it in that based on the existing uh, status, the next step is to send a welcome email. So I will do that by clicking this button. So in this case, I won't need to ask for the agent to do that it will recognize the next step and in this case it's asking me okay now provide uh, the start time for the first day uh, meeting 
this is important information uh, when sending the, the welcome email because it will automatically create a, a, an online meeting for this new employee. So in this case, let's say it's going to be the 9 a.m. So I'm going to provide that information and the agent will do uh, different activities. It will not only create a, the welcome email, but it will also create, as I said before, um, a meeting, a Teams meeting, right? So you will see that we received this card with some details about the employee, the start date, the intro meeting time, and even uh, the option to join the meeting. So if I click here, this will open a Teams meeting. I can, I will continue in the browser and this will open the team meeting for the first day. So I can do that from here, of course. And this is just to demonstrate how a single action can execute many different activities at the same time. Not only that, but if I go back to my email, in this case, I can see, for example, the email that the new employee will receive. Just for the purpose of this demo, I have sent that email to the manager, but you will see all the details, including the name, the role, some specific details such as the, the start day, who is the manager, the details of the meeting, some point of contact, some relevant information for that meeting. Okay, so once again, let's ask the agent to get details about this new hire. I just want to make sure the status has been updated. So as you can see here, it has been successfully updated. Now it's on the status welcome email sent. And um, again, it has identified the status and is recommending me the next step through a button to request an IT equipment. So in this case, I'm just gonna click this button and similarly, like in the previous case, when we send a welcome email, is uh, executing this specific skill and it's returning a form like when we register a new employee. Something that is interesting to notice is that the new hire email has been automatically identified based on the context of the conversation. So I'm providing that information to the form and I don't have to do that manually. But then I'm going to provide some additional details like, for example, uh, which software access the new employee needs. So I'm going to just copy this. The priority level, let's say that this uh, is high priority and we need to assign a laptop, a headset and a mouse to the new employee. So with that, I'm just going to submit this request and um, this will basically uh, create a new record on a separate SharePoint list with, with all this information. Again, it has created a card for me with all the details. I can view the detail of, of this request. I'm going to click here and you will see basically that a new record has been created. This is a separate list that will be managed by a different team. And let me go to my email because you will see that we have received an email as well as a, as a manager of the request. And we can even have a link to the record if we want to see the details. Perfect. Now, let's say that the IT team has already received this request. Um, they have assigned this request to, to a particular employee. So they will change the status of this request to in progress. So once I do that, there is going to be an agent flow that will uh, execute because it has determined the, the status of this request. And with that, it will basically send a notification to the manager. So if we go to Teams, we will see that the manager has received a notification of the status of this request. We see now that the request is in progress and we see the details of that particular request. We can even click this button and this will open the, the record with all the information. Okay, but now let's, let's say that this request has been completed. So the status will be changed to fulfilled. When I click here, this of course will update the status. So there is gonna be an agent flow that will identify that the status has changed uh, and based on that, we'll execute another task. In this case, what it will do is it will create an approval process for the manager to basically uh, complete the onboarding process because this is the, the last steps of the onboarding process. So we will go back to Microsoft Teams to see this new notification. And as you can see here, the manager has received a notification. This is a request for approval. So if we click here, this will open uh, this window. It has the details about this specific uh, employee. It has uh, specified that the IT re equipment request has been completed. So we basically need to confirm that everything is okay. Um, and in this case, we even have the link to the request to see more details. But in this case, I'm just gonna click approve. 
So once we approve the process, basically a, a new notification will be sent. So if I go to the to this card, we will see that the status of the new hire has been changed to onboarding completed. And we see all the details, including the, the role, the department, the onboarding body. We can click on this button and this will open again the record or more details if needed. Something important to, to notice is that we have not only updated the status of the new hire, but also we have updated the availability of the onboarding body. So if we go back to SharePoint and let me go to the, um, to the specific list that has the onboarding bodies. And if we visit the body directory list, we will see now that Violet Martinez is available to support new hires. So we have done, we have executed different activities with a single request. And in that way, we finish our demo. All right, that was just a quick look at what you will be building by the end of this course. In the next video, we will break it down and explore all the key components that make it work, one step at a time. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming lessons. See you in the next one.